Hi, I'm Sue Convery from Michigan State University. And Opti demonstrated the game with all of its functionality. What I'm going to share with you is why and how I adapted or configured a game to fit for my undergraduate accounting course. And that is using just a subset of these basic modules. And Abdi's flipping slides for me, so I'll say next. Sure. Over the last five years, I've taught most of the sections of the intermediate financial accounting course for undergraduates. So this is a required class in the accounting program. And um, obviously accounting majors, although we have a lot of finance majors. Next. Let me tell you a bit more about um, the program. The faculty set out a set of goals based on all their interactions with our alumni and with business professionals about how best to prepare students for careers that we're not even sure what they will look like in the future. So in bold, these six bullet points are um, the goals the faculty have established, call them core competencies. And I've selected one of the measurable learning objectives for each one of these. Now, what I noticed is I do a decent job teaching and assessing critical thinking, but I could not say the same for strategic problem solving skills. And um, so the difference often between those two is presented in a chess game analogy, for example, a critical thinker is calculating the next move and the strategic problem solver is five moves ahead. And you've gotta be a critical thinker to be a strategic problem solver, but not necessarily the other way around. So while we are not expecting that juniors in, a, in college are strategic problem solving people, what we can do is put them in some kind of activities where they practice these strategy skills. Next. So again, this course is uh, much like your own programs, I'm sure. One of six required classes taken by all accounting majors. Over the years, we've been flexible and taught over several modalities. I just finished a short summer session that was online but synchronous, 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, two days a week. Uh, so it's primarily an in-person setting, but when we were in, in an online setting, I still did the same teamwork skills using Zoom and breakout sessions. Uh, we've loaded a ton of technology into the course, including Altrix. The course is designated as one of our assurance of learning courses. So we assess student learning with a case, a financial case, at the end of the semester. Now, throughout the semester, we're teaching using cases. We try to choose Midwest um, multinational enterprises like Harley Davidson, Stryker, Whirlpool. Those corporations, for those corporations, inventory is a significant asset. So you're gonna see the focus that I use in using Monsoon Sim is based on inventory. And the last bullet point, over the years I have increased the weight of experiential team-based activities upwards to 50% and kept the traditional individual content assessments to 50% of the total points for the course. Next. Uh, no surprise, there are challenges in this course. We are asked to cover a lot of knowledge, a lot of content. Uh, if you've ever seen an intermediate financial accounting textbook, it's huge. So what we want to do is cover that knowledge and add to it communication skills, teamwork skills, uh, professional attitudes and mindsets, for example, critical thinking. And here's a phrase that I remember from the 1990s, the Accounting Education Change Commission had a, um, had a paper out, a position paper that said, we want students to thrive on ambiguity. So let me come back around to that. 
Another challenge is to find effective and efficient instructional resources. And then um, a, a challenge is we want to collaborate with faculty. We have a very large and, um, and, and willing to cooperate faculty, but it's hard to find time in the right forums for doing that. Uh, what we'd like is to align the undergrad goals with the graduate program goals. Next. So here's why I chose Monsoon Sim. Uh, my colleague Sub was preparing to use the game and we had had a good experience working on an Alteryx and country by country reporting case. So um, one summer we played the game over Zoom calls and I quickly saw that it was flexible enough for me to focus on inventory, those chapters in the text. Uh, I saw quickly it was innovative, fun. It was a, designed as a competition with teams that fit into the set of goals we want for this first required accounting class. And then the online platform with Zoom breakout rooms, if we needed them, was um, a great draw for in exploring this game. And I found it relatively easy for instructors to learn how to be a game facilitator. Next. Here's how I use the game. I assign students, and we call them learners in the game, to three or four person teams. I ask them to do advanced preparation, to read the short six page instruction document I put together to watch a short video. Also to register in the game, monsoonsim.com, and go into their pre-assigned teams within a particular game code. So uh, again, with advice from Sev, I chose to play four 45 minute game days. These were one week apart. So every week we were getting ready for game day. I was able to set one day to be one minute uh, I think Sev often sets a day to be um, a part of a minute, 60 seconds, not 60, but less than that, 45. So with, um, with practice, I realize students get better. So it's logical that the first two game days are practice rounds, do-overs. And then when they start game day three, we pause at the end of that day and then I carry forward the, um, all the results and all the activity into game day four. So students continue for another 45 days. And what we have then is a, a 90 day simulation period, about a three month experience for running a business. Next, uh, I chose to make this 10% of the points in the course. That's a significant chunk. And uh, yet those points were allocated in the way you see presented here. Most of the points were for their performance in the game, which meant their team's ranking across some key performance indicators. But it was important to recognize attendance and also to require a reflection survey at the end of the four game days. So on the next slide, let me show you these uh, key performance indicators. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Let, let's do this first. Um, when the teams read the instruction six page manual, then they knew that they had to decide on what roles each of the team mates were going to play. They had to set up retail stores that could be one or it could be uh, many. They could choose to use a warehouse. They had to procure inventory and the product that we were using were three types of juice and there were two vendors that they could choose from. The teams had to set selling prices. So the game is to strategically manage their inventory levels to meet demand. Obviously they were not in control of demand, that was the game. And uh, we did tell them there were particular holidays in which they would see a, a demand for serve, um, for their um, products surge. They could choose to advertise and subscribe to a marketing report so they knew a little bit more about their competition. And then their 
they needed to monitor five key performance indicators. So the next slide will show you which ones I chose. I have five listed here. I had a much wider set I could have chosen from, uh, maybe upwards to 10 or more. The weight that I've settled in on is uh, presented here, where most of the weight is on bottom line net profit. With some other key performance indicators capturing information from the balance sheet. So next, the reflection questions that I asked, let me uh, tell you what the four are and the two in bold, I will give you some examples of student responses. So the first question was, what did you learn in the game and what connections could you make between the game and the textbook? I wanted to be sure this wasn't an extra add-on exercise, but rather they saw how it was integrated. Question two, what do you think drove your team's results? Question three, if there was a game day five, what would you do differently? And question four, do you think this simulation should be used again? Next. So here's a, a positive response from one student. Let me just pick out some bulleted, um, bold phrases. This student said, I learned a ton. They had to distinguish between good vendors and bad vendors. That was their impression. Supply chain issues were recognized. They had to plan for holidays. They went on to say they connected a ton between the game and the chapters in the textbook. They could apply terminology and concepts. They used the idea of perpetual inventory systems, average days in inventory, and markups and markdowns because they had control over setting the price and they could change that throughout the game. Next. So this past summer, 100% uh, of the 16 people who were in the course said, use the game again. And over the prior three semesters, in the 90%. Now, um, notice there were just a handful of students who said no to the game. I'm going to present a couple of their comments, too. But on the next slide, let's first look at why some folks were positive about the game. And these bullet points are just different uh, student responses I pulled out. One said it was a fun, interactive way to teach us about inventory. Um, highly recommend, really enjoyed it, loved the game. I thought the third student was thoughtful. With the virtual climate that we are in, it allows students to interact and engage with each other, considering we may not have had the opportunity to do so. And I think the last bullet point, this person, seemed to say their eyes were open, that they had no idea how many aspects are involved when you manage a business and how detrimental one wrong move could be. Go to the next, please. So here's a student, um, three different students actually, but the first one, see if you don't recognize the student from, um, from your experience teaching. This uh, person said, I may have a bias because my team did not perform well. The game was more based on luck. If you could figure something out before the other teams did. I also think the simulation should not have been graded based on ranking, rather on participation. And if your group was successful in attending each meeting. I didn't attend the Zoom meetings. Um, I can only infer, I know everybody was at every game day. Uh, perhaps his or her team were meeting in between game days in Zoom in order to strategize. And finally, he or she says, without being given the answer, there is really no way to figure it out yourself. So I conclude this student does not thrive on ambiguity and has some, uh, some way to go before they become a strategic thinker. 
another person didn't like the pressure. It is true there is a time pressure to the game. And uh, another person thought it was it would be better implemented in a different course. I actually agree, but I think it should be implemented in several courses. Finally, uh, let me say a couple things in an overall um, way to think about this. In my class, students really only spent six hours on the game, preparing, playing, and reflecting on their experience to earn 10% of their grade. I, I think that's reasonable. Um, I was pleased with the outcomes. Uh, the best outcome was that I had 100% attendance, not just on these game days, but in all the team-based work that we did throughout the semester. I felt that they understood they should not let their team down. So I do plan to use this game again. 